Welcome back to Unit 3, Lesson 3, Video Part 4. This part's optional unless you are away. We're just going to pick up, we finished off with the actual process, the transcription. Now you have your mRNA. At this point, we have to do mRNA processing. So what we mean is at the end of transcription, at end of transcription, there is what's called an immature mRNA that must be further processed to form a mature mRNA. which can then go to cytosol to serve as blueprint for building a protein. Okay, so three things must happen at this point. So three steps to maturation. The first is they actually add a what's called a methylated guanine cap. the five prime end of the mRNA. So it looks just like your typical guanine base but they add what's called a methyl group, a CH3 group to it and that along with what they do to the other end protects the mRNA from being degraded. Basically when you're done with your mRNA you cut this off and then it says okay we're done with the mRNA you can throw out the blueprint. So they add a methylene or methylated cap and they add a poly adenine. So it's called a poly A, just like the adenine base, a poly A tail to the three prime end. Together these protect the mRNA in cytosol from being destroyed. When your cells decided it's built enough of that protein from the blueprint, it will then get rid of the methylated guanine cap and the poly A tail, at which point it will destroy that blueprint. The third thing is called alternative splicing. And the best way to think about alternative splicing is to imagine that you've decided you want to build your dream home. And you go to an architect and you kind of describe what you want, you want, but you're not really sure. You kind of want a kitchen like this and a living room like this and a bath bathroom and some bedrooms like this and maybe you know, a games room and a theater room, but you're not exactly sure what you want. So the architect draws up various versions of your living room and various versions of kitchens and that, and when you come in, he lays them all across a big board in front of you. And you pick and choose out of those different options what you really want to go into your final house. mRNA is actually like that. It doesn't just have one version of the protein that can be built from it. It has various sections you can pick and choose and put together. So what an immature mRNA actually looks like, and we'll draw it here, is it's a whole bunch of nucleotides strung together. 
but they're sort of grouped in sections that represent different parts of the protein. So this could be what's called exon 1 followed by intron 1, exon 2, exon 3, skip a spot, exon 4, exon 5. So, intron 2, intron 3, intron 4, okay. So what we have, exons are coding nucleotides. They actually represent blueprint for protein. Whereas, and they can, if they're processed properly, exit for exon to cytosol. So, Exons can exit to the cytosol. Introns are instruction codons. They don't actually make part of the protein. They say fit tab A to tab or slot B, just like you would have instructions on how to build a piece of furniture. that influence splicing. They don't code for the protein, they just tell you how to put the various exons together. They remain in in nucleus, intron for in. Okay. So this instructions are sort of cut out and stay in. So I'm just going to move down to the next page. So let's just draw this idea of an immature mRNA again. With your various exons and introns. Find it easier. It doesn't matter exactly how many copies you have, but if you have several, it makes it easier to make the point. So, in alternative splicing, it's called alternative splicing because you can splice together different exons. Now, what happened to my pen? Doesn't want to work there. Okay, so unfortunately my pen has died, but we will try to use the mouse. It's going to be a little messier. So at this point, we have various exons and introns, and we're going to do alternative splicing. So alternative means you can get different alternatives out of it, different forms. Splicing means to add together the exons. To splice something together. Okay, so in this case, we might choose in one version, the cell might have instructions to put together exon 1 with exon 3 with exon 4 to form an mRNA. That looks like 
Sorry, my mouse skills aren't that good. I am not a gamer. X on one. X on three. And X on four. That would code for one type of protein. However, the cell might get a different signal that once this mRNA is made to instead join exon 2 with exon 4 and exon 5 to get an alternate product, an alternate mRNA. Ooh, we don't want that. An alternate mRNA. coding for a slightly different protein and X on 5. This is called alternate splicing, how you can have one mRNA actually being spliced to give you directions or codes, blueprints for different types of proteins. And at this point it's not mature until they go back and add a methylated guanine cap. I put my little hat on here and I put it as an M for methylated guanine cap and a poly A tail, so a whole bunch of A's added to the three prime end. Now that's an M mature mRNA that can leave the nucleus and go to the cytosol. Here they'll add on the cap too. So they'll add on a methylated guanine to help protect it. And a poly A tail, all indicating that it's mature. A whole bunch of A's. We draw more, but I kind of ran myself out of room. Poly A. So these would be your alternate mRNAs and your mature mRNA which can now go to the cytosol so it leaves the nucleus to the cytosol where it serves as a working blueprint. And I hope I get my pen back working very soon. Working blueprint to build proteins. So some people find alternative splicing a little bit confusing. An example of where your protein, your body uses alternative splicing is to make antibodies. So typically your body makes what's called a receptor on its cell surface that can detect bad guys. And when it detects that bad guy, it then cuts the tail off of that receptor so that it no longer embeds on the cell surface, but it's actually secreted out and works as an antibody to attack the bad guys. And all it does is it takes the same mRNA and it just splices out the little part that codes for the tail that holds it onto the cell membrane, cuts that off, and then it's automatically secreted out into your blood as an antibody. So alternative splicing is getting a different protein product from the same original mRNA just by splicing it slightly differently. If you have any questions about that, come see me. Have a good day.